Peter, thanks so much for joining us this morning. And I want to ask you about this question. You know, it's great that we've got these Virginia class submarines coming online, but what sort of weapons platforms is going, are going to be on these boats? Obviously, presumably, they are not going to be nuclear armed, so they won't have that deterrent effect. But what is going to be the defense capability of them? Is it going to be conventional missiles, underwater drones? What are we expecting them to be able to do for us um, from a military and also strategic deterrence standpoint? Uh, James, I think three things. Um, firstly, what submarines conventionally do is they sink other submarines and they sink ships and you use torpedoes for that. So uh, we, we already have the American Mark 48 torpedo, a very capable long-range weapon. Uh, that will be part of it. Secondly, I think we will see um, vertical launch tubes, um, uh, uh, which the, the latest Virginia-class uh, boats have, which have the ability to fire uh, cruise missiles to a sort of a publicly disclosed range of about 1,500 to 1,600 kilometres. So you'll be able to use those to attack targets on the land. Um, and then with these boats, I would also expect they will have um, autonomous underwater vehicles, which will be things that you can uh, float off the submarine and the crew of the submarine will be able to control an autonomous vehicle that may be operating several hundred kilometres away. So instead of just a submarine, you actually get a network of uh, underwater vehicles operating over, you know, many hundreds of square kilometres. I, th I think in a nutshell, that that's the, the weapons that the Virginia-class uh, submarine will be carrying. Rita? What about uh, the time frame and the cost? Uh, everything you described there initially sounds very expensive indeed. What, what sort of ex the, what are taxpayers facing here? It is going to be very expensive, Rita. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, there, there is no precision yet around the numbers. I've, I've said in my writing that I think this whole project is about 1% of gross national product. Oof. So at the moment, defence spends 2%. That's about $45 billion. I, I think by the time this project comes to fruition, you can add another $20 billion on top of that just for the submarines. But that will be the crew. It will be broadening that industry base. It will be the weapons they use, the cost of operating them. So, y yes, it's unbelievably expensive, Rita, but, but really the, the key point to make here is that we have been under-investing in defence for decades. The only reason we've been able to do that is because the Americans have been providing the, the bigger security overlay in the Indo-Pacific region. And that era has gone. Uh, if we're going to get closer to the US, the expectation will be we're going to be spending something near the real cost of what it takes to defend Australia. And I think that's going to lift the defence budget from, you know, 2% of gross national product today to maybe 3% or more uh, in coming years. If, if we're going to make a success of this project, and, and let's face it, the last thing we want to do is get five years in like we did with the French boats, only to discover it's mm. not quite what we want. <laughs> so the government's going to have to invest properly for this, and Australians need to understand that does mean uh, defence expenditure is going to grow. But yeah. that also, I mean, uh, suggests a lot of economic activity that's going to be spun off of that. So it's not entirely a sunk mm. cost, even if you're not in the conflict. The question, though, I want to ask, though, is who are we going to get to man these boats, these nuclear-powered boats, um, these submarines? You know, we don't do a lot of nuclear education in this country because we've got this bizarre fear of nuclear power. Um, Where is the recruitment drive going to come from? And would you like to see, you know, a kind of a, a recruiting campaign to say, hey, be a part of this really elite thing using great technology to defend Australia. Um, it seems like there's a great kind of, you know, almost sort of national character building opportunity in this as well in terms of, you know, making this something that we can all want to get on board with, so to speak. James, I know quite a few young people in, in the Defence Force already who will be absolutely desperate to get into this program because it is going to be so exciting and such a step up in Australian military capability. I, I don't think we're going to struggle to find people uh, that will be wanting to join the submarine service uh, or, or indeed, you know, wider defence industry or the Defence Force. I, I, I think what individuals look for, particularly at the start of a career, is the idea of, of an interesting career progression that's going to take them to interesting places, um, something that is nationally valued and resourced instead of a bit of a, a niche business, which, frankly, uh, defence 
uh, is a bit like that these days. So with, with the priority, the government interest, the closeness of the US relationship, I, I honestly don't think we'll have trouble finding people who will think this is just brilliant uh, and they'll want to be a part of it. And just very quickly before we go, Peter, the one people who, one group of people who won't think it's brilliant is China. <laughs> you haven't mentioned China. Uh, just briefly there, what's their reaction to this? Well, more than anything else, China hates AUKUS. It hates it more than anything Australia's done in the last <laughs> so half decade. We must be on the that right tells path. me we're onto something. You know, I think we're onto something wrong. China knows that this is the start of a serious military pushback against its own defence growth, um, and therefore we need to get on with it. We need to speed it up. Uh, and I, frankly, this is the best sign I've seen in years that we are now starting to say to China, hang on, stop. We, you, you cannot just expect to take over the region and everyone is going to acquiesce to that. Um, AUKUS is a signal uh, that that's not going to happen. And that's why China is so dead set against it. Well, Peter Jennings, you've been talking about this for many years. Uh, it's a great day as far as I'm concerned. We've been talking about it on this show as well for many years that we do need to stand up to China. That's our key number one priority. Uh, thank you so much, Peter, for coming on this morning on Outsiders. And we'll chat again soon.